I went undercover for a weight loss anti-bloating diet program to show you all the red flags. And I'ma spill the tea. So, hear me out here. I get a lot of DMs and I actually read most of them and respond to quite a few. But a few weeks ago, a number of people sent me an Instagram link to a diet program that was promising to eliminate bloating, IBS, and cause significant weight loss in just a few short weeks. Sure. <laughs> I looked through the Instagram account and saw a bunch of typical before and after photos. Then I went to the website to learn a little bit more about what the program actually was all about. Interestingly, there were lots more photos and lots of testimonials, but not much else in terms of what the diet entailed, the qualifications of the creators, or even the price. So I was like, mm, this is shady as but obviously I want to know more. So I booked one of their onboarding calls to learn more, but basically my spidey sense was right. That man's an imposter. And they were just trying to sell me on one of their programs on the spot. So in today's video, I'm going to share what I experienced during that onboarding call and the big red flags that I want you guys all to avoid if you're ever considering trying out one of these online wellness programs. But first, let me tell you about my sponsor care of between my digestive concerns sleep stress and general health your girl takes a lot of pills but I am honestly a big proponent of supplements if they help you achieve better food freedom by allowing you to enjoy the foods you love. So I was really excited to try Care Of, which is a supplement subscription service that ships high quality vitamins straight to your door every month. The way it works is that you take a personalized quiz about your health goals and it gives you unique recommendations based on those answers. My quiz recommended vitamin D, probiotic blend, protein powder, magnesium, and rhodiola, as well as their gut check quick sticks for on the go. This was largely to address some of my digestive struggles and IBS, as well as my goal to improve my long-term sleep and stress concerns. I've only started using the service, but it really does make it so much easier to be able to get all of the supplements that you need in one easy place, especially because I don't even have to leave home to get them. And as a dietitian, I love that Care of supplements are third-party tested and backed by the latest science, which you all know is really important to me. And when your goals or needs change, it's easy to update your quiz and get new recommendations sent your way. So if you're looking to start a supplement routine or update your current one, take care of's quiz to find out what's recommended for you. And you can check out the link in my description and use my promo code ABBYSHARP to get 50% off of your first order. And a very quick disclaimer here, the purpose of this video is obviously not to expose this program or this coach so I'm bleeping out names, altering his voice, and I'm also not going to respond to comments on what this program actually is. Let's keep it respectful and educational. Also a heads up, this interview has been edited for brevity, so you're not really going to understand the full context of everything that was said, but that's why the point of this video is not to critique or criticize this particular program. It is just to share with you some specific verbiage or language or words that are often used used in some of these wellness course sales funnels. I want to focus on some of the problematic red flags at large, and that way you can apply these no matter what kind of program you run into online. Any audio that you hear is really just to help you understand some examples and the verbiage that is often used to sell programs like this. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring that little bell. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram and TikTok. All right, folks. Let's get into it. Red flag number one, they don't screen for eating disorders when giving 
restrictive diet advice. I've discussed this red flag in my Noom review right here, but I basically mentioned that it's pretty problematic to be prescribing a restrictive weight loss diet, and then in the same breath, to be promising to heal your relationship with food. We hear this all the time in a lot of these kind of new world diet plans. And I'm not saying that these two things cannot exist at the same time or happen concurrently, but I am saying that this can be very dangerous territory without a very skilled, well-trained team. Generally speaking, for the masses, restrictive diets often just shift the ED mindset from worrying about one bad food or component of food to another. So they might tell you that you don't need to count calories, but now instead you just need to cut out 20 different foods to fix your digestion. Respectfully, I would say that this is much less likely to fix your digestion as it is to just further distract you from getting the help that you actually need. And sometimes the help that you need is to be told to no longer diet. And when I specifically asked about this, I got a roundabout response. When I was a teenager and like in my early 20s had an eating disorder, um, is this program still appropriate for folks who have like had eating disorders or have like probably like long-term kind of struggles with their relationship with food? As far as like really supporting you with, with the development of, of your relationship with food, um, we can absolutely do that. Like have you, like people who already have like long histories with problems with like, you know, having a, a challenging relationship with food later, like earlier on in life when they have to, obviously like it seems, sounds like, and I don't know what your, the diet protocol is, but it sounds like there's a bunch of foods that I've got to cut out. Is that like, have you seen people get worse in terms of their eating disorder or anything like that in your program? Yeah, so I haven't seen anyone get worse. We've never had any like harsh reviews where we're like, ouch. So in this specific program, there might be a screening down the road. I don't know, I didn't get that far. Maybe one day we'll find out. But it certainly was never mentioned at all on the onboarding call as a way to really determine if the program was right for me, which was apparently the purpose of the onboarding call. And honestly, anyone trained in evidence-based eating disorder support would know that a diet that requires you to cut out a bunch of foods is often not right for anyone with a history of EDs. And if it is still to be used, it needs to be done so with very careful supervision and professional support. And speaking of professional support, the next big red flag is when the program is run by self-taught gurus and not credible evidence-based professionals. I should have hung up when I heard the guy say this. So this is years of rigorous self-study and self-experiment and we've had about 400 people come through now to have amazing results. Personally, my personal opinion is, you know, self-study and self-education is pretty important. No, there's a huge difference between continuing education through verified evidence-based channels as we do as dietitians and doctors do when we go to conferences or upgrade our specialty training. No special training, just be at the fight. I'm ready to back up everything I'm saying and I'm food talking. But self-education can be really dangerous, especially in the digital age. There is no shortage of conspiracy bull on the internet. And if you want to believe something, you will absolutely have no trouble finding a website or a blog or a Facebook group that confirms and validates those beliefs. Do you maybe see a problem with what you've done? Thanks to social media, everyone is a nutrition expert, but most of the public have no clue what to look for when seeking out a legitimate source. So look very carefully at those qualifications and choose a course taught by someone with validated evidence-based education, not just a weekend self-study course or personal experience. And that brings me to my next red flag. Folks, I want you to run for the hills when the only evidence of success is anecdotal. The power of anecdotal evidence or storytelling is profound. Anecdotal evidence and testimonies are often a lot more persuasive than actual research because they have these digestible sound bites that are communicated with passion and sensationalism in a way that can cause them to more easily go viral compared with actual 
actual scientific, non-sexy research. Testimonies also come from real people, and it's way easier to identify with a real person than a more abstract statistical reality. But we don't do research on a sample size of one for a reason. It's riddled with cognitive bias and confounders, and it's not at all replicable. It's not actual science. Here's an example of what I mean. And Jacqueline, at the time, you know, she had tried absolutely everything. She can't figure out why her bloating, why her acid reflux, why these things, constipation, will not go away. And just doing what pretty much and I had found and had worked on over time, within 30 days, I mean, that thing, it was like a blast in the past. Of course, we all want a happy ever after story like this, but A, we actually don't have proof that any of these stories that we hear online or through word of mouth are actually true. And B, if they were true, which of course we would hope that they are, what we're missing out on is everything else going on. What else was happening in this one person's life that could have contributed to an improvement in symptoms aside from whatever 30 day diet they tried? I mean, even the placebo effect could be a more likely cause than the unique characteristics of any one diet or cleanse. And that brings me to another flag when they don't disclose what you have to do or eat until you buy the program. Okay, so I never even thought of this as a red flag until I did this program onboarding call and I was shocked by how cryptic it all felt. This program legit blanked out parts of the testimonies that had any reference to the diet that they were on on their website and when I called them out for it I was told well, we can't really give away our secret sauce before you pay for the program. Take a listen. I guess my first question is like, why isn't that that information given? Because obviously that like, if it's something that can't be done from the get go, then I kind of would have would want to know that, you know, I, I saw in one of the questions they asked, do you eat red meat? Uh, because if you don't, then it's not a good fit. So, I mean, is this like a carnivore diet? Is it like a full on like carnivore keto diet? Um, it just felt like weird that that information wasn't even shared at all. I mean, part of the reason why I don't share it because, because we have people invest in the opportunity to learn it and to uncover the information. Um, so we wouldn't like to, you know, put out our cure, not cure, but, you know, healing protocol out there. Really, the answer is none of the above. I mean, we do start off with definitely eliminating some foods, which I can talk to you about. This is more than a red flag, my friends. This is false advertising and it's dangerous as f You wouldn't go to a healthcare practitioner who made you pay for the unknown service before they would disclose if they were going to do like physiotherapy or massage on you. You wouldn't sign a waiver for a surgery and not know if they were going to be amputating a limb or like taking out a tooth. I'm in, I'm out, I quit. Whose kidneys are these? It's called informed consent. And it is so irresponsible to sell anyone on something that they really know nothing about. Yikes. Moving on to red flag. Number five, you have to cut out entire food groups. So this program proudly advertised that you don't need to count calories, fast, or take any expensive supplements or shakes. Great, but then is it? Because then I instantly knew it would be a strict elimination diet. I instantly knew it would be pretty f***ing miserable. And the problem with elimination diet programs for the masses like this is that they usually can only do more harm than good. An elimination diet is always a risk benefit situation. So it should only ever be performed under the individual supervision of a registered dietitian who can custom tailor it to you based on your unique triggers and needs. Cutting out foods that you specifically don't need to cut out risks nutritional deficiencies, disordered eating, and damage to the gut microbiome. Now, as far as like other food groups, well, you know, some, some of the more obvious foods we'll be taking a break from will be things like alcohol, uh, refined sugars, refined carbs. Um, as far as some not so obvious foods we'll be taking a break from, those will be things like fiber in the beginning. And uh, the protocol really is just because this is what works to get the results that people want. Yeah, that's a hard pass for me, dog. Moving on, another big no-no is when the program discredits or fear mongers mainstream healthcare as being a shill for big pharma. Let's take a listen. Um, but as far as like, you know, doctors, they're not even taught anything on nutrition. Um, I have two friends who are doctors, at least in the States here, and it's really, really sad. Um, but you know, it's all for the push of big pharma. 
on it. Listen, the traditional Western healthcare system isn't the only tool we have in our toolbox. And for a lot of folks with super complicated nutrition or digestive concerns, going to your GP is often just not going to get you all of the symptom relief that you might want or need. And that's because doctors have to know a fair bit about a lot of different areas of practice. So it's often not possible for them to dive deep enough into some of these really super nuanced cases. It is not because they're money hungry shills who will prescribe or push anything to make a buck. That is fear mongering bull and it discredits the millions of hardworking, caring healthcare professionals who truly do want the best for you. And sometimes the best for you is pharmaceuticals. Sometimes it's a more natural approach. And a lot of the times it's a combination of both. And on that note, another big red flag is when a sales program positions itself as the secret solution that mainstream healthcare doesn't want you to know. <gasps> Shocking. Hang on, folks, you are not going to believe this. This is a common tactic in the wellness space and it's honestly toxic as <laughs> This conspiracy theory has really got to stop. Do you really think that millions of healthcare workers around the world have like banded together in a secret society to stop the proliferation of knowledge that would universally help lives? No, because all of those healthcare workers know that there is no universal secret sauce to health. It is highly individual and no one program would ever fix everyone in the world. If we had a simple universal cure for obesity, cancer, IBS, you name it, we would absolutely know it by now. Listen to this. Well, I, again, like it hasn't been very transparent for me in terms of like what, what it's gonna entail. Like it's kind of cryptic, which is a little scary for me. And I can eat red meat, but I don't eat red meat very often, like for environmental reasons, for health reasons. Um, it's expensive. I have this like sense that this is like a, this might, must be some kind of carnivore diet cleanse. You know, as far as like environmental factors of red meat, again, there is a lot of misinformation out there and we do, there's a real lot of every education. Um, what kind of underground cherry picked data are you drawing on? to convince me to only eat red meat. Like that is nutritional gaslighting as far as I'm concerned. Like I said before, there is a niche pool of evidence of varying degrees of quality for virtually anything you want to prove or disprove. You want to confirm that water isn't wet? There's probably a Reddit thread somewhere for you. Real science isn't a secret. It's the antithesis of secrecy. It's the proliferation of knowledge with the greatest level of control and precision possible. It's not perfect, but it's certainly better than an Instagram influencer who knows how to Google. Red flag number eight, it promises instant success without any mention of long-term results. So this conversation says it all. Your participants in like a couple years down the road or anything like that, that would give you any insight onto how, like how they've maintained their weight loss or how they've maintained their symptom remission. So the um, most recent one I can think of is been about nine weeks now. So not like, you know, one or two years. So I think that's a great idea to high highlight that and to reach out to those past clients. Yeah. Nine weeks is not long-term. And it's also in their best interest not to track long-term results when those results would probably not be in their favor. Oh, hell no. This program, for example, was described at times as like a reset. And I was told that I could incorporate the off-limit foods back into my life after the short-lived diet. How could we not expect any weight loss or symptom improvements to regress when we just go back to real life. Hmm? And that brings me to red flag number nine. It insists that their way is the way to see results. Take a listen. Your budget changes. Um, I can tell you for sure that this is the way to, to really try and uh, get rid of the bloating and, and the constipation and really SIBO. We've had a lot of people come in with SIBO um, and a lot of people reverse it. The incredible 
thing about human bodies is that there is no one size fits all for anything. When we're talking about bloating, we need to know the cause of the bloating in order to properly treat it. And while anyone can likely lose weight in a calorie deficit, keeping it off will really depend on the person and how well that lifestyle or diet aligns with their lifestyle. There is no one way to see results. Hard stop. So I was straight up with this guy at the end of the call. I mean, this program was obviously not for me. And even though it was a really expensive program, I told him that it wasn't a price objection per se, but that it didn't seem right to commit to a program without knowing what I was committing to. So hopefully he gets that feedback from more than just me and they actually take it to heart. That and like all the other red flags I cited as well. But on that note, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below if there's anything else you want to see me review, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.